Hey guys, this is Rob with the next video in the electrical Revit project series. So our familiar open screen, let's get that project opened again, create new local, override existing. So this video is going to start looking into the lighting plans. If you recall way back when we set up the project, we created floor plans for the power and we also created ceiling plans for our lighting. And again, the difference is that in Revit, floor plans look down onto the floor. Ceiling plans actually look up to the ceiling. So they behave a bit differently. Um, we will explore that view range in a ceiling plan to get an idea what the difference is there. And then we'll cover um, a number of light fixtures that we have customized for our use, both in appearance and in the data that they contain. And we'll cover also some uh, the lighting, the lighting schedule, you know, things like that. So we'll see how much we can get done with this first video before it gets too long. So let's take a look at our raw first floor lighting plan over here in the browser. This is one we've created. So let's double click that and look at the lighting plan. Now, for a view template on this, we created it with the lighting ceiling eighth inch view template. Now this template has, oh, things turned on and off. And what you may notice is it looks like some architectural light fixtures may be showing. Now this you know, is a good thing for us when we lay out our lighting plan, if we have some idea of what the architect is looking for. Now, as we know, these are never 100% correct because they've not done lighting calcs. They've just laid out uh, lights pretty much to make a pretty ceiling. Um, sometimes they've applied some lighting logic to it, but other times they're just uh, trying to lay it out architecturally. And a lot of times it's our job to go in and do the lighting calcs, um, possibly add or remove fixtures, possibly change fixtures. Based upon our lighting calcs, we select lumens and all of that. But for this video, we're going to assume that this lighting layout from the architect is at least where we're going to start at a SD or DD level design. Now, sometimes we may be able to get away with using the architect's lighting plan on ours and possibly adding some fixture tags that might you know suffice for now but we're going to take the step that we actually want fixtures in our model at this time for design development so i'm going to show you how we do that at least this is one way to do it um, we are not going to want the architect's lighting fixtures to show up in our lighting plan. I mean, it's handy while we're constructing the lighting plan, but we don't want that to be the final product. As you'll see, as we put our lights in, they won't be exactly the same symbol. And eventually they won't be exactly the same location or size. So we'll have to turn that off. So let me show you how I deal with that. This lighting ceiling eighth inch is our, what I would call our production view. This is the view that we're going to drag onto our sheet to print. So we don't want lights to show up here. We couldn't do this in the template because this has to do with the linked architectural model. And we didn't have that in our template. So this is another thing that we have to modify in the view template. So let's go to our view template. Lighting ceiling eighth inch. Over here with our overrides, we're going to be dealing with the architectural link. So we want to deal with this RVT Revit links. So edit there. And you can see at this tab, we're in the Revit links tab. We've already set it to custom because we already were in here turning off the architectural grids, if you'll recall. So we already set it up for custom, which means this is 
controlled separately from our electrical model. Now let's go to a model category because we're going to be dealing with light fixtures which are an actual model entity not an annotation. So let's go down to light fixtures. Lighting fixtures and lighting devices. Lighting devices are pretty much lighting controls, switches, things like that. Lighting fixtures are of course the lights themselves. Let's turn both of those off for our um, production view. Okay. There. Now their lights are turned off. Well, now what? Because we actually want them on to do our job. This is just the final production view. So what we have over here, again under view templates, is we have created down at the bottom working views. Now these are like temporary views that we switch to while we're working on developing our model. So that's a nice thing in Revit is you can change views back and forth without hurting anything. So if we go down here to the working lighting ceiling eighth inch, say OK. Now this is kind of a coordination view also, not just working view. It turns those lights back on in the architectural model. But now we can easily turn them off by switching views. So switching view templates is another thing that we do often to for different situations. If we want to coordinate, um, let's say we want to coordinate this lighting plan with mechanical or plumbing. Well, the working views have, have those categories turned on also because we haven't dealt with it yet, but we could link in the arc or the mechanical model if it's being done in Revit, of course, and then we can have all of that overlaid and we can really start to coordinate some clash detection, things like that. We'll cover that in future videos. But for now, just know that we're going to use this working view with the architectural lights turned on to start developing our lighting plan. Next, I want to show you what we have in the electrical template for light fixtures. So let's go over here into our families, close out the electrical equipment. Here we have lighting devices open. Let's close that for now. Lighting fixtures, and I've expanded a number of these. But if you look at the raw headings, you can see what families we have. So a quick run through of what's in the electrical drawing template. We have our bug eyes for emergency. We have an exit sign and it's called ceiling because it actually attaches to a ceiling or hosts to the ceiling. Now, whether you have end up with a wall mounted or ceiling mounted exit sign, um, it, you can have either one you want, but we still use the ceiling model. We have an in ground light. We have a pendant circular style light, a pendant linear style. We even have, for exterior, we have a pole with fixtures on it we can show you when we do site plans. We have a recessed down lights, recessed troughers, rectangular shape. We have a surface circular shape or dome. We have a surface linear, like a wrap. We have a wall mounted, and we call it decorative light because it can be like a sconce or it can even be a wall pack. And then we have a wall mount linear, maybe like a, a vanity light. So we have a number of fixtures and they behave differently. So I'm going to cover these as we do this lighting plan to give you an idea how they behave. And what I mean by that is some will host to the ceiling. Some will host to a wall. Others will just not be hosted at all. They'll just be floating. So it takes practice and experience to get used to what does what. And I'll kind of show you how you can get a feel for trying to remember that. For now, let's start with a simple surface mount uh, fixture. One thing you'll notice too is we don't have our room names or room tags in here yet. So one of the first things you may want to do also, like we did in the power plan, is put in some room tags. So let's do that quickly. Up under the annotate. Over here is the room tag, like we did on the power plan. Click room tag. 
Now, this is something you may run into. Um, some of our templates have rooms visible, some don't. So we are in the working view template. So we may have rooms turned off for the working view. So to actually put room names in, and you can see it as I'm placing it, but once I place it, you'll see the warning pop up. Click it there, here's our warning. None of the created elements are visible in this reflective ceiling plan for a floor lighting. You may want to check the active view parameters, visibility, etc. Well, that's because we have rooms turned off. We could turn them back on here, but in this case, let's go back to our production view of lighting ceiling and see there. See, rooms are turned on in our actual production view. So this is where we want to put our room tags in. So let's just do that quickly. We can move these around. We can add leaders. But as you can see, it really goes quickly. As long as the architect has done their job and defined rooms. This is all the corridor. This is a separate break room, the stair. And like I mentioned before, that if the architect happens to delete a room entity in their model, well, next time we get the model, our tag won't work, so we may have to repoint it. But as you can see, it's it's an easy process. Let's see that corridor is still the same as this corridor. Okay. And this is a different lobby. And then the courtyard elevators, again, we will have to just type text into those. But this is good for now. So we have our room names, room tags. And let's go back to our working view down here, working lighting, ceiling, eighth inch. Okay. Those turn off. We are just using this to get our fixtures placed into the model and in, in the right locations. Uh, we're not going to eventually we're not going to circuit from here or anything like that. This is just kind of a coordination view. Let's start with um, the one thing is it's nice to be able to see room tags in the working view. I, I hear you there. But let's see what we have. Let's say we're going to put some surface, you know, surface type strips, surface or wraps in this fix in this room here. Um, another thing you can do here is if you do turn on your selectable items here, so you can select links and pinned items. If you remember, if you hover over something right now, if I click this, I'm, I'm clicking the entire architectural model link. If I want to drill down and get to this light fixture, I have to use tab. See, I tabbed twice and it eventually got to a light fixture. So what did they use? Well, this is WPA, the architect's name, lighting pendant linear. Now they've put a pendant into this room in their model. So maybe this gives us an idea that we don't want a surface fixture. Maybe we want a pendant after all. So you can, I mean, you could also probably see this on their PDF. They may have it tagged. Let's do that again. They may have it labeled. Now we can't tell from here. Can we see the type from here? Yes. It's grayed out. We can't change it, but they actually have this fixture defined as F08. Now sometimes they will want you to match their fixture designation. Sometimes they even provide the fixture schedule. Of course, that's all dependent on the architect and the project. We're going to say for our purposes of training here that we are going to be in control of naming our fixtures how we like and doing our own uh, fixture schedule. So we're not going to worry about the F08 in this case, but it does give us an idea that they're looking for a pendant. So we will start with a pendant. Okay, so over here in our choices, what do we have? We're going to want some kind of a linear pendant, not circular. So if we go to pendant linear, 
open up this model, I'm sorry, family, and see what types we have. Well, we have a generic pendant linear type. So let's drag that pendant linear type into the model. You can see we have a, a, a wider uh, symbol. And sometimes we do that just for visibility. These really thin little fixtures can sometimes get lost in a plan. So we can leave the wide model. Looks like we already have a four foot model. Now, well, this, this will let us place our fixture right on top of theirs. So we can do that. In some instances, we may see where it won't let us put it on top. And it's typically with a surface fixture. But this pendant, let's put it right on top, click, put another one right on top, click. But before I add too many, I actually need to define this fixture because right now this it's using a generic type out of our template. So let's go through. If you've watched the power videos, you know that what we do is we do a lot of creating our own type. So we're going to edit this type and duplicate it so we can give it a name and we can change all these type parameters in our own type that we're creating. So let's duplicate this. Um, you know, we'll start giving it names. Um, we can change them later if we need to, but I'm just going to make this our A fixture. So let's call A and just something handy to name this type for future reference. We'll just call this pendant linear four foot. And that's just kind of our description of the type. Now the type mark, which means how it's going to tag is just going to simply be an A. Now up here, the load classification, these come in typically as a default lighting, general lighting. We can leave it at that. If you look at behind the scenes for the lighting, for a lighting general load classification, it uses a demand factor with the same name. The lighting general demand factor uses a constant load of 125%. So all lighting is 125%. There's the code load for that. That's what's happening behind the scenes. Um, in this project, we're going 12208, so a 120 volt is appropriate. It already has LED for the lamp type, which will be scheduled. The apparent load. At this level of DD, you may or may not have the lumens and um, VA figured out yet. If not, you can just leave something that's close. I'll leave the 30. And then here's the dimensions of the actual um, symbol model that gets put in. We'll take a look in 3D, see what this looks like. Um, again, we don't often do um, you know 3D views, things like that electrically, but it's not a hard thing to at least get it close to what it may look like. This will also affect the symbol size. Four foot. Now this light source symbol size, that's kind of strange. If we were to dig into this light fixture into the family editor and start looking at what, you know, what's all in this model, in this family, um, there's a symbol for the source of the light and it, it can be various sizes. Sometimes these light source symbols will um, make it hard for us to place lights near it, especially if a, um, a light in the architectural model has a large light source symbol, you'll see that we can't place a fixture near it. It acts like it, it kind of clashes. We're going to leave this like this for now. We don't need to worry about it, but just something to note that we may have to deal with this in the future with other lights. Um, stem offset, I think this would be in offset from the ends where the stems are, it's six, six inches in from the end. And the width of the fixture we have is one foot. We could change this to get closer to what the architect is showing. Let's go with a, see what happens with six inches. Now this will affect the size of the circle. See that? This is our kind of our connection circle. So it'll be a little larger, which is okay. It doesn't hurt that symbol. 
So now this fixture is our A. Let's tag it. Go up here, quick launch. Not quick launch, but the quick access. Select tag, and we don't need a leader. So we'll leave that unchecked. It puts it right in the middle, so then we drag it apart. Now there is our smart fixture tag. If I was to say, oh, I don't want type A, the type mark, I'm going to change it to B. Enter, okay. The tag changes with it. So in the future, if you have to change this to an A or A1 or whatever, don't worry, you don't have to retype all of your tags. They will change automatically. Let's go back and keep it as A. A, enter, okay. All right, now we have our own fixture type A. Well, where did it get put? That's the other thing. Vertically, where did it put? Well, the elevation from the level, it came in as zero. Right now it's on the floor. I'm going to drop that camera in here, up here, the little house, go to a camera. I'll put it near their door. And let's look into the room beyond the walls. And let's go to a coordination view. I'm not seeing much yet. Apply. Okay. Now hit F8 to look around. Hold that down and look. Oh, well, there's the door. Okay. There's another door. I think what the deal is, we can't see our light. Oh, I know. I, th I think we're outside the door. Let's walk. Carefully, slowly. There we go. I walked into the room very slowly. So, here's our room we're dealing with. I was on the wrong side of the door. And there's our light fixture sitting on the floor. And you can see its pendants coming up. So there's our light at zero. Well, we need to figure out what height this is going to be at. Well, how do we know what height? Well, now we need to know what height the ceiling is. Um, get an idea. Does the architect have an idea where they want it? So let's go back to our first floor lighting. I, I think a section through here would be helpful. So again, we have an easy way to come up to the quick access, hit section, and let's just do a section starting here, looking to the right, click, click, escape out of there, and then double click the section. And where are we? We're down here at level one. There's our light fixture sitting on the floor with its pendants. Now their light fixture, you can see it right there, they have it at that height. Let's use our quick dimensions up here to see where it is. They have it at eight feet. So we will mimic what the architect has done, at least for now, the DD level, and move this up to eight feet. Now we could drag it, things like that, but I like to just go over here to elevation from a level, type in eight. Feet is the default, so eight, enter. Apply that, and now it's up at eight feet. Now, if we care about the 3D aspect, we can actually take this pendant top and drag it up to the ceiling. There, that was a quick way to deal with the three-dimensional aspect. Now, let's go back to our 3D view that we created. Hit F8 to look around. It's not on the floor anymore. Now, it's up at the ceiling. And you can see the architectural light was really just kind of a two-dimensional symbol but it's up here at eight feet so now we have our light fixture and if we cared about the 3d view of it which we don't often but again it's easy to to fix while we're doing it um and if we were trying to coordinate this with duct work and, and piping and, and things like that this is helpful so there we go. There's our fixture. We know that's at eight feet. Go back to our first floor lighting plan. Now to document this, eventually we may even do it now at DD. We would, you know, put put a note or a tag of some type on here saying that these are mounted at eight feet above finished floor. Now let me do that right now just to show you how we can use simple text to add notes. We can also do a hex with a note and with a with a note, you know, schedule, but 
We can do that later. For now, let's just use text. We can either get to the text up here under annotate, or we can get to it up here at the quick access. So let's do the quick access text. Now, what do we have? What's it coming in as? Aerial with an arrow? That makes sense. We can use an arrow. So let's just say, um, hang at eight feet, zero inches, AFF, above finished floor. Now click back on that text, and now we can select up the top here a leader, curved or straight. I use straight, and then we can point that leader, and let's point it to the fixture we're going to put here. We can put an elbow on it. There, and I can put, I can add to this also, typical. If I can type, typical. So typical for all of those type A fixtures. So now let's go ahead and put another one in. Now click on this, I can right click, say create similar, or if I'm in the same room, I know I have the same ceiling height, I have everything the same, I can click on it and just up here under modify, I can go to the copy. So I can just copy this because I know everything's going to be the same. And this will automatically snap to corner, it'll snap to a center, it has all the O snap type things already enabled. So I will snap to the middle of that end and I'll move it to here. And now I've created a copy and I've tried to line them up exactly. So I copied it and then let's tag it. I can right click here and create similar to get to my fixture tag. And that kind of snaps so they're aligned. So there, back to my 3D view. There they both are. Now in reality, you know, we might have a them connected together with only two pendants, things like that. We're not going to worry about that in our three-dimensional model. It's just approximate anyway. And then our section again, there's our fixtures. So there. So that shows you that, um, you know, when you're putting lights in, you can use the smart aspect of the architectural model to see what you have without having to go find elevations, interior elevations or sections in the architectural PDFs. So use the model to your advantage as you do this. So we'll continue on like this. Let's do one more check. Now we still have our select everything on and that's handy sometimes when you're doing this modeling. It can also be hazardous if you're starting to grab things like the model and starting to move things around. Um, but let's hit tab to tab through the model. There we go, tab, tab, took two of them. Click on that. That's another pendant linear. So in this, we know this is the electrical room. In here, they were anticipating a pendant as well. So down here, I'm not going to copy from here to here because it, it may not be the exact same parameters. So I will just do a right click, create similar. Here's my light fixture. Now, how do I rotate it? Well, the space bar automatically rotates. If I hold it out here in the middle of nowhere, it'll just rotate in 90 degree increments. If I were to hold it over something that has an angle to it, let's say we haven't, you know, in the future, like for example, this, when we get to this, we're going to want to copy that angle. Well, how do we do that? If you hold the light fixture right over top of one of these lines and then hit space, now space uses the angles underneath to align. So now that is automatically aligned. But in this room, I'm okay with the 90 degree angle, so hold it over the top. There we go. I can place this right on top. And click on this, and what is it? This one's at eight feet also. Well, we don't know what the architect had. Should we drop another section? Let's do it. Now you may think, oh, we're cluttering up our drawing with all these sections. Well, these sections don't have a, a number or sheet associated with them. So Revit's smart enough to not print these sections when we print a PDF of our plan. It, there's a check mark check that says don't print a section bubble if it's not actually used in the drawing set. So these will just clutter up our working drawings, but it won't print that way. 
We can also delete them. And when I think about it, I already have a section here. I'm deleting this section. It says the, the view called section 7 is going to be deleted. Well, that's okay. I don't need it. I already have a section in here. I can move it around. There we go. Double click it. Section 6. I think I clicked on the other one. There we go. Okay, so there we go. This is where we have, we made this in our power plan to look at our panel. We have a panel and we have a switchboard and we have our light. Let's see where the architecture is. Like. Yeah, architectural light is in the same place, eight feet. So undo this, put it back. So it looks like we're good in our ceiling. Our pendant hits the ceiling or structure, so we're good there. So that works for that one. And again, right, I like to right click and say create similar instead of going through trying to, oh, it wants to save, yes. Tag the A, move it out of the way. All right, so we just do that for all the pendants. And you'll want to see, hit use tab to get down to see what these are. More pendants. So I'll just go through and put these type A's everywhere that the pendants are. What do I have in here? Tab, tab. That's a pendant. So this architect was very specific about what they wanted. Sometimes you'll get an architecture, an architectural plan that, you know, does have, has no lights yet. So you're on your own to start doing some lighting design. And then you just, you know, select the right fixtures appropriately. Let us find something else. Okay, let's go to a downlight. Tab to get to this downlight. What do they have? Recess. Down, okay, so it's a recess downlight. So we want to use a recessed downlight fixture. So what do we have here? Pendants. Here we have recessed downlight. Perfect. Here's our generic. Now what happens if we drag this onto the model? Now, look at that. That's kind of weird. If you recognize that shape, that looks like a side or a downlight right there with bars, mounting bars for above a ceiling. So this is actually a 3D model downlight, but it's trying to attach it to a wall, not my ceiling. And it even sees this architectural light fixture as a 3D item that we can attach this to the edge of it, the wall of it. Well, the reason that is, is the default attachment method is place on a vertical face. You can see that in blue up there it's automatically picking vertical face as a default when you put any model in here. So we want to actually place on a horizontal face. Now the tool doesn't say horizontal face, but that's what place on face means. It can be a horizontal or a sloped face, not just vertical. So we will pick place on face. Now you can see my fixture lights up because it's found the ceiling. It found the ceiling out here. it would find the header. It finds the ceiling here. So it's finding a ceiling. Now we're lucky. Sometimes you'll get an architectural model that does not have ceilings installed yet. They've not modeled them. So sometimes you'll jump in here and you will not be able to place it. It's almost like if I'm trying to place it out here, there's no ceiling out here. So I will get the little circle with the slash through it. So want to make sure that I'm doing it where I have a ceiling. I'm just going to close this. Don't need emails popping up during my videos. Um, so now that it's in the ceiling, we can actually place it. So this we've got easy here. Let's go ahead and place it right there in the middle. Also, sometimes if light, if the architect's light fixtures are on, I won't be able to get close to this because that light uh, source symbol will create a problem. So we're lucky here. This model has an ideal architectural model. I give them credit for that. It's not causing me pr problems like a number of others do. What I will say is if you have trouble putting a light fixture right on top of another, if it, if it gives you that no place bang, you may have to find somewhere else in the ceiling, for example, way over here, not near a light fixture to place your light. 
escape out. Now you can drag it. Once it's placed, you can drag it on top. Also, sometimes you'll get a warning that says this is not a valid location to put a light fixture. Well, it's because it's interfering with the architect's light fixture. So there's a number of things that can mess you up with um, placing lights and ceilings. Um, I'll try to do some future videos on, on those specific instances because those happen quite often. But in this case, I'm lucky I can just place it. And again, I need to only place one until I get it defined as a fixture type and not just the generic MFIA recessed downlight. So the same thing here is let's go into edit type. Might as well get used to, the, used to this. We have the default. It's the only type we have in this family. So we will duplicate. Let's call this one a B. Um, we'll just call it for now recessed downlight. Again, we're kind of at the um, DD level, so we're not getting too specific. Lighting general is fine. 120 volt. LED 15 VA we'll go with that for now and let's put our B for tagging purposes okay escape out hit the tag by category B shows right on top of it there we go now we can again if we're in the same ceiling same room we are safe to just copy this copying center to center okay and then we want to tag these tag this way or right click create similar okay now one thing I notice here is an exit sign sometimes architects show them sometimes they don't uh, this looks like this exit out through a st this stairwell so we'll go ahead and put an exit sign here um, you know, sometimes they'll show them in a place that we wouldn't normally show them. Sometimes we would show an exit sign above this door rather than out in the middle. So I'm going to do that in this case. Let's make an exit sign. What do we have over here? Exit sign. We have exit sign ceiling mount. So drag this over. Again, it's going to be placed on vertical face as a default. So, you know, you'll see, it's, you can see my exit sign is trying to put it on the face of the wall. We need it on the ceiling, so face, there it is. It's a lot larger symbol than they have. This is what we use. So let's put that right near the, the door. Again, now that when we select or specify this fixture, we can say it's you know wall mount, and that works with any of these symbols. Escape out. Now you'll notice that this one has two faces. In our case, we only need a single face. So if you click on it, over on the right, this is actually an instance. These are instance parameters, as you recall. So for only for this one instance of, of, a, of an exit sign, we're going to change it to single. Now the face is on the wrong side. We want the face over here. So click on it and use our space bar to rotate it. There we go. So two space bar it rotates at 90 degrees. Escape out of there. Now we want to not use the generic name. We need our own type. Duplicate. We're going to call an exit sign X in this case. You can use whatever naming scheme you're going to use. Exit sign single face. And lighting general is fine for circuiting. 120 volt LED. Uh, this one happens to have some driver info. You'll see in the schedule how that works. 5VA is good. Uh, sizes are fine. Let's go down to our tagging mark X. And let's go up to tag X. Voila. So there we go. We've got uh, three fixtures to find. Let's go see what's happening with our schedule while we do this. Now... If you followed along in the in the uh, power plan creation with that equipment schedule, we had to um, put a, t a special flag, I call it, a special parameter if we wanted that 
piece of equipment to be scheduled or not. Well, that's because sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. But with lights, we really need them all scheduled. So there's no need to flag it. They just all go to the schedule automatically. So let's go find our schedule in our project browser. Up here under schedules, we have lighting fixture schedule that came in on our electrical template. Double click that. Now you see a schedule. Now if this is too small for uh, older eyes to see, you can hold the control button down key and then scroll in to enlarge that you know make it as big as you need to or you can make it the other way i just get a decent size i like to be able to see as much of the schedule as i can but there we go now what's happening here is we have our a b and our x our three fixtures that we created they were all set as led already now the lumens come in kind of as a default lumen for that however we created the family we will change this eventually um, we will change the color temperature eventually to what we want. And then we already had our loads defined. And then the rest of this is where we can type in, in this schedule, we can type in a uh, manufacturer model, the description, like we'd normally do a fixture schedule, the housing, the optics, you know, is it, uh, I don't know, type four distribution, that kind of thing. Um, and then the actual driver and you, as we saw in the exit sign it already had a default or multivolt high power factor driver so this is where we can enter all the rest of that information in now we can enter it in here it's a nice easy way to do it but it also you're actually modifying the fixture type itself for example on this description let's say i'm going to type in uh, what was our type a um, it was the pendant. So we could say four foot linear pendant for description. And it's changing the type. This change will apply to all elements of this type, which is fine. Now, if I go back to my lighting plan, go back, let's go find a fixture A. Oh, the other thing is if I highlight it here, it'll be highlighted in my plan. So it kind of visually shows me where they are. If I click on one and look at the type variable, type variables or parameters, there, four foot linear pendant. We just typed that in in the schedule and now it shows up here. So you can type it in either place. Um, as a side note, to create our schedule, we had to use some of these parameters that may have an odd name. And we, we wanted to use built-in um, parameters rather than creating separate ones. So we just repurposed some of these. So it's almost easier to change this information on the schedule view. But it does change it in both places. So that shows how the schedule view works. Um, you know, lumens and, and such, for a DD, I don't typically get too detailed, but for now... I like to put at least a placeholder in. And let's say that that's going to be a 3000 lumen for now. And then the color temperature interior, a lot of my projects, I'm sticking with 3500. So at least th that gets close. And also usually it's a, you know, 100 lumens per watt is, is a pretty typical value. So 3000 lumens with 30 VA load it kind of coordinates, at least for now, at DD level. This one here, we have 15 VA, so this would be more closer to a 1500 lumen. So at least that gets it somewhat coordinated. We want 3500. Okay. And again, this is all reflected in the fixture type itself. So if I go back and look at my B, 1500 lumens, 3500K, go back to my B, where is that? We had that down here. Look at the B, edit the type. We already had 15 VA. Down here, 3500K, we had that in there. Now the lumens are kind of buried in this information, so it may not be apparent. Um, this whole thing behaves a little differently because if you have the right kind of family with the right IES files and such, we can actually do some 
zonal cavity method of photometrics. Um, I haven't I haven't used it a lot. It doesn't seem to be as simple as that. It takes a little extra work. So I, I still prefer to use visual uh, as a third party lighting calculator. But someday we maybe get this to uh, to work nicely and at least let us do some zonal cavity method. Um, I like the point by point method in visual anyway. So I just I just do it there and don't worry about that kind of stuff. As you can see, you know, you can even have a photometric web file in here, an IES file in here. But um, anyway, I haven't been doing lighting calcs in Revit yet. Someday, maybe. But there, that's that. Now, we can go through the rest of the fixtures. Let's look at a surface linear. Even if the architect said pen, we're going to put surface in just to, to practice. So let's go up, excuse me, go down and find a surface wrap style fixture. And we've got some different lengths already pre-made. You can always create your own as well. Let's drag the surface wrap four foot in. Now, the key here is surface means it's attached to a surface, which means it's going to be hosted to a ceiling. So again, it comes in the vertical face. So you can see my fixture is trying to mount on a wall. Well, in this case, we don't want that. We would use the wall mount for that. For a ceiling surface fixture, we need to go place on face like we did with the downlight. And here we go. This is an example of where it won't let me place this light fixture anywhere to the side of this light. Well, that's because this fixture probably in the architectural model has a light source that is like large. And so it thinks that that's part of the modeler and we can't place it on there. So we have to place the light fixture away from this fixture and then drag it over. So let's use our space bar to turn it. There we go. And I can't do that, but look how cool. I can get pretty close. I'm just going to place it right here. One thing I'll notice too is I'm not getting my connection circle. So my hunch is that if this ceiling is not perfectly flat, horizontal, if it's sloped at all, then my symbol won't show up correctly. And let me try to put one somewhere else. Let's try to put one in an, on another. Now here, see that? If I place it in here, this ceiling happens to be an actual nice flat horizontal ceiling, so my symbol shows up correctly. The symbol only shows up right if it's a flat ceiling. This one's not a flat ceiling. Let's explore this room. Let's get a section in here. No tag. Oh, it looks like I'm trying to tag. Let me escape out of here and hit the correct button. There we go. Let's draw a section. Now I could draw a section through the whole building if I need to, but right now for my purposes, I'm just doing this room. Double click. What do we have? Okay. All right. Yeah, see what we're seeing is we have some interesting things going on with the ceiling. And so it may not be exactly 13 feet, 7 and 35, 128 of an inch. So there's something sloped or something going on with the ceiling that is not letting our ceiling mount fixture work well. As you can see, the architect here, they have a pendant in here for that reason. So I'm trying to apply a surface fixture to a room that doesn't have a nice flat ceiling. So probably a bad example. But let's say we wanted to put one into that room that does have a good ceiling. You just put the fixture like that. You can click on it, hit spacebar to rotate it, put it wherever you want. You know, this restroom wouldn't have typically that kind of fixture. It looks like it has something over in here. But that gives you an idea how to put a surface mount fixture. So again, I think it's going to take practice using each of these families to get an idea whether it's a ceiling mount or whether it's a wall mount or whether it's pendant. It just takes practice 
to get a feel for how that works. Um, for example, the wall mount decorative light. Let's say we're going to use this as a, a wall mount outside. So drag a wall mount decorative light in. Now I can't even see anything at all. Why can't I see a light? I just see crosshairs. Well, that means it's probably not within our view range. I mean, we know lights are turned on, so it's not that. It's probably not in our view range. Well, that's because the elevation from level for this is at zero. It's so low that we can't see it. We did see our pendant when it was on the floor. That's because the pendants stick up above the floor, so it was letting us see it. In this case, this fixture doesn't have a pendant sticking above the floor, so we can't see it. So let's change it right now to something like 8 feet. There we go. Now we can actually see the symbol. So let's place that here outside our door. And it is not hosted. These fixtures, I don't know if this helps, but host it's just hosting to, to the level. It's not hosting to a wall, the model. It's just hosting to, to the level. So it's not going to stick to anything. So there's a free, free form on this guy. You can put it right on the wall. I usually stick mine just a little bit off the wall so I can see my symbol. So there. Now I can go through and edit type. Same thing as before, duplicate. Let's call this a wall mounted. I'm just going to give it a W wall pack. And I've got 30 on that for now. You know, again, DD level. And let's call it, tag it with W. And I know that description describes what it is, so I can actually put it right here. I can just say it's a uh, just a wall pack in caps because this is going to end up on my schedule. Wall pack. Okay. Oops. Okay. And then let's tag it with a W. So that's that. All right. So we will go through for every one of these fixtures get those in, um, use the um, create similar where you can to speed things up. If you have the same room, same ceiling, you can use copy to help speed things up. Uh, but it's, you know, it's a one by one placement. Um, I think I showed you, I did show you how to turn light fixtures for this one. Now these look like an eight foot light fixture. How do we fix that? Let's first of all, see what the architect has here. Tab, tab, pendant, linear, eight foot. So that's an eight foot fixture. So let's take, and it's probably more decorative than what I have in a, you know, in an electrical room. So I'm going to give that its own fixture type. Create similar, but I can start with what I already have. Hit space bar to get it rotated. And I'm just going to put it right in the middle. Escape out of there. Now let's first give it its own type. We're going to call this one a fixture C, um, pendant, linear, eight foot. And here, length, I can change this parameter right there to eight foot. I'm going to double the watts to 60 VA and call this C and I like to put a little description. Um, eight foot pendant linear for now. Okay, okay, okay. There, stretch it to eight feet. All right. So now I can get close. Luckily, it lets me. And just right there, plop it on top. And then I can do create similar. Hover, space bar to rotate plop it there now that i mean they, they clash right here because my symbol is too wide that's okay create similar and this one comes in there boom so now i have and these are at eight feet because i started from one that was already at eight feet but now i have my type b that i can tag i'm sorry c that i can tag Type C. Simple as that. So you can go through your your model and add fixtures as you need. Um, change dimensions. Uh, you know, create your type. 
get some VA in there to start from. It will schedule as needed. You can add stuff here. You can go through and fix lumens and that. And uh, this will get you at a good place for a, uh, for a DD drawing. Um, anything else here? Uh, the pole will deal with outside. Emergency bug eyes. They come in if you're going to use those because we haven't talked about emergency lighting other than an exit sign. If you're going to use a bug eye system, just pull that in. And again, you need to give it a height. It, you can tell that it's not ceiling or yeah, ceiling hosted because this doesn't pop up with that place on face. So that's kind of a key to help you realize if this is a ceiling fixture or not. Because again, if I bring in a ceiling fixture, then I get this place component, ceiling or wall ceiling or work plane. But if I drag in something that's not, then you won't see that. So that's a good indication until you get super familiar with each fixture type that this is just a free placement. So let's get it up at eight feet for now, eight enter. And now we have a bug eye symbol that we could put on the wall. And then you can go through and give it a type and all that, just like we do with everything else. Now, if you're not using bug eyes, let's say we're going to use a either battery backup in individual fixtures or if we're going to put light fixtures on an inverter or generator well then we won't have the bug eyes we'll have certain fixtures either every other fixture whatever you end up with sometimes in corridors i end up with every fixture on emergency well we can turn these into an emergency looking fixture with an instance parameter so if I click this little emergency box there, apply it, it fills in the circle on a downlight. If I do it on, let's say in the electrical room, this is going to be an emergency light. Click on A, go over here to the emergency, and this is instance. So it's each fixture is even of the same type, can have it on or off. Apply. So now that indicates that that's an emergency type A. Now, you may wonder why is that an instance variable? Well, because in the situation where you have, a, say, a separate source for emergency, like a generator or an inverter, you'll have some A fixtures that will be connected to that emergency circuit and some A fixtures like these that will not. So it, it can't be a type parameter because in this case, not all A types are emergency. Now, granted, if you don't have a central source for emergency and you're just going with individual battery backup, you know, you may have a fixture called AE that is a battery backup fixture. Well, you can still use the instance type emergency for that, but you just have to remember to turn that on for all of your AEs or, or if you have battery backup you know, BEs, things like that. But anyway, that is the basics of getting light fixtures in. Um, I kind of covered the issue when you can't place a fixture on top of an Arctex fixture, place it nearby. Sometimes you'll have to place it in the, in the corridor and then drag it in. And there's a few other tricks for how to deal with that that I'll show in a future video. But let's go now. This is our working view. Let's go look at what happened to our regular lighting view and all we have to do is change template we don't have to change anything else now we have our fixture tags back on now we have our note showing there so we need to move these away from our lights and in some cases we need to add leaders like we did on the power plan remember just click leader and then find the little move and then you can move the circle as well move that elbow or shoulder and there you go so that's how a dd level lighting plan is created we're going to synchronize and then close this out and call that another video until next time